Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Fallout 76. My name's Camel and today I'm going to show you how to find power armor that you can get within the first few minutes after leaving Vault 76. While I'm sure there are other power armor locations nearby, I have so far only found this one. Now, if you are into these kind of things, tips, tricks, guides, things like that, links to my other Fallout 76 videos can be found down in the description along with my social media links. Be sure to check all of that out after this video. Now, initially I thought it was a bit gimmicky, you know, get power armor at the start of the game. But after diving deep, power armor is actually super valuable to low level players as it comes with a plethora of powerful buffs. Now in a single player game, you might not want to do something like this, but with Fallout 76 being online, having an upper hand is always a good thing. The power armor is also quite rare and spawns infrequently. So if you want to start collecting power armor pieces and have a massive asset up your sleeve, here is how you can get power armor at the start of the game. All we need to do is leave Vault 76 and make our way right here to the location known as Morgantown Train Yard. On the map, it is found where my character is currently standing, pretty much due east of Vault 76. Now this walk should take you no more than two minutes if you walk straight here from the vault, but as we know, the world is quite distracting, so it will probably take you longer. And just a warning, you will likely have to fight a few Scorched here, but they are low level and dealt with easily. So once we get to the Morgantown train yard, we'll notice a few red train carriages, but parked right next to the building is a rusty gray looking carriage with USA written on the side. When you find it, walk up onto the concrete platform and make your way up the ramp inside the carriage itself, where we will find the power armor. Now there are a few things to note. While this is a power armor spawn location, someone else may have come through here and grabbed it, and items will not always be at their spawn points. So if it's not here when you turn up, that's pretty common, but be sure to check every now and then, eventually you'll find it here. Now as we see, I tried to hop into the power armor around level 5 or so, but it told me to remove the power armor pieces from the frame first. And as we can see here, the T60 power armor pieces attached to this particular power armor chassis require level 40 to use. Do not be disheartened. Simply take the power armor pieces off of the chassis and then jump into it. So while we don't have power armor pieces on the frame, we do have them in our inventory which we can use at a later date. Now you might be thinking, boo, what is this thing going to do for me? Well luckily I do have the answers for you. Initially I thought the empty power armor chassis was absolutely useless because it doesn't actually tell you what it does to your character. Luckily, after some extensive research, I've found the answers for you. So before you ask, yes, in Fallout 76, power armor still uses fusion cores or power cores or whatever they're called in this. These can be crafted, bought or found all over the place. Now they also seem to last a lot longer than they did in Fallout 4. As I ran and walked in my power armor for about three minutes, took a jump and honestly, I could not even notice the amount the power armor core level dropped, if it did drop at all. So the cores are definitely something you want to keep in mind, but yeah, I didn't have to worry about it at all. So the power armor chassis with no pieces on it at all will automatically default set all of your defensives, so armor rating, energy resistance rating, and radiation resistance rating, all of them will be set to 60. Now at low levels, this is enormous. Now it's also worth noting that hopping into power armor chassis will remove all benefits of the armor you currently have equipped apart from the helmets because your head's sticking out, I guess. However, again, at low levels, the buffs provided by the power armor chassis will far outweigh any armor and resistance you currently have provided by your armor. So straight away, level two, or whenever you come and get this, you're gonna get resistance ratings across the board of 60. That is like four times what mine currently were. Now, it will also default set your strength to 10. Again, at low levels, this is an enormous buff. Now to understand why this is such a massive buff early on in the game, we need to understand what strength actually does in Fallout 76. So for each point of strength, you'll gain 5 carry weight and gain 1 damage to your melee weapons. 
So the increase you'll see to your carry weight and melee damage will depend on the strength gained by the power armor chassis. For example, my character had a strength of 3. I jumped into the chassis, which took my strength to 10. Going from 3 to 10, that's a difference of 7 in strength. Therefore, my melee weapons dealt 7 more damage and my carry weight was increased by 35. Remember, we gain 5 carry weight for each point of strength. So gaining 7 strength, that's 7 strength times 5 carry weight, that is 35 total carry weight points that I gained from putting on the chassis. Of course, this number will vary depending on what your character's current strength level is. All of these buffs and benefits will be removed once you hop out of the power armor chassis, but as soon as you jump back in, they will all be applied again. And along with all these buffs, we can also now jump off of any height location and take zero full damage. And we can also sprint into enemies and knock smaller enemies over, you know, ghouls squirrels I guess, but you're not going to be knocking over super units or anything like that. So all in all, on the buff board, even if you're not that into the thought of power armor or wearing a power armor frame, I think you should definitely come and get this. It's an ace you certainly want up your sleeve. Now it's also worth noting that once you hop into power armor, it is yours. No one else can steal it. So if you hop out of it and walk away for a few minutes, you'll get this message and it will automatically place the power armor chassis back into your inventory, which as we can see, yeah, it is in fact in our inventory, which is a new feature from Fallout 4. Now, if we drop the power armor chassis, there will actually be no option to pick it up. However, if we jump into it, then hop out of it again, there will now be that third option to pick it up and put it into our inventory. Now, you may have noticed that in our inventory, the power armor chassis has a weight of 10. So you might be thinking about storing it in your stash, which you can if you want to, but at lower levels, I would 100% suggest keeping it on you at all times. Just think about it. You are sacrificing 10 carry weight for a power armor chassis that you can drop and jump into whenever you want to gain a bunch of strength and defensive values. So if you need massive rad resistance because you're about to go into some crazily irradiated place, just jump into the power armor. Say you're about to fight a bunch of enemies and you need more armor and energy resistance, just drop the power armor chassis and jump into it. But the best part is, if you become over encumbered, that's when you're carrying too much, moving will burn your AP and you will be unable to fast travel. Of course, when you're carrying too much stuff, what you want to do is go back to your camp and stash all of the things you've been picking up. Well, if you're carrying the power armor chassis on you, all you need to do is drop it, which will instantly free up 10 carry weight, and once you jump into it, it will boost your carry weight from the strength buff. So you can now finish picking up all the goodies from wherever you are, then safely fast travel back to your camp, dump all of your junk and weapons and whatever it is you have been collecting. Once you've freed yourself, just jump out of the power armor, pick it up, back into your inventory and be on your merry way. So again, 100%, I suggest you keep the power armor chassis on you at all times. It is an ultra valuable asset that is well worth the carry weight sacrifice of 10, which again is instantly mitigated when you drop it and jump into it. So all in all, I've never been a power armor guy, but in an online environment, you always want to have an upper hand in all situations. So definitely come here in your first few levels and grab this power armor right next to Vault 76. You don't have to use it, but you can start collecting the pieces to use at a later date and have a massive ace up your sleeve in tough situations, of course, that being the power armor chassis. So be sure to let me know how you go with this and if you do find the locations of any other power armor near Vault 76 or just anywhere in general, be sure to let me and everyone else know. Of course, once you get this, you know what you can do to your enemies? You can chassis them down. <laughs> And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Camel, and this has been my guide for finding power armor right at the start of the game. I do hope this video helped you out, and if it did, you'll be very interested in checking out my other Fallout 76 videos that I've already done. Links to them can be found down in the description. 
Now down there, in the old description, you can find links to my social media, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and if you would like to support the channel in a more personal way, you can become a heroic patron on Patreon or sponsor the channel right here on YouTube. As I'm sure you know, all of my time and energy goes into making these videos that I create for you to enjoy, so your support is most appreciated and welcomed in any and all forms. So thank you very much for watching, thank you for supporting the channel, and I will see you very shortly in the next video. I'll see you there soon.